Hi, everybody. Chris Holman here for the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. And we're going to run down to uh, the Detroit area right now, I believe, and find Trevor Paul. Uh, you've noticed Trevor and heard of Trevor and seen him on these broadcasts for many years uh, in different capacities. And now we're bringing him back as the uh, Chief Mobility Officer for the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification for the State of Michigan. And Trevor, uh, A, congratulations on a couple of fronts. Um, uh, I believe you have a six-month-old inside, and we haven't had the chance to formally say congratulations, Dad. He's a huge Chris Holman fan. Uh, he's really excited that, that I'm on your show today. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, he's crying right now and can't join. But Be yeah. Because he found out he is on the show, right? <laughs> No. no. <laughs> um, and and also, you know, congratulations on this position. And this is this is a big statement for the state of Michigan, even creating this position. Walk us through that a little bit. What uh, what was in the governor's mind? Yeah. So, I mean, it all boils down to this. Um, the governor wants to create a stronger state economy and believes that we can do that through safer, more equitable and environmentally conscious transportation. Um, the intent of this office wasn't to slow anything down because there's a lot of amazing momentum going on right now all around the state when it comes to the future of uh, transportation. But the goal here was to sort of unify those efforts under one common vision and create a more systematic approach um, that, that can really allow us to continue to compete globally, um, not just sort of in the future of automotive, uh, which we know we're going to do, um, but also in some of these emerging burgeoning technologies um, that are going to change the way we move over the next 20, 30, 40 years. And this office is going to be charged with preparing our state for that as well. You know, this is one of the things when we were talking off air a little bit that, that you reminded me of that mobility. Uh, we always think, you know, the auto industry, right? That's that's mobility. But it, this is going to go and reach far beyond that. Yeah, and you know, the thing to keep in mind is that the same foundational technologies, autonomous, shared, connected, all the things that make a car drive itself and make a car talk to a stop sign or a street light, I mean, those are being used in drones. Those are being used in autonomous freight solutions. Um, those are being used in the future of rail. Um, so as, if, if, our, if this year, <laughs> this pandemic has taught us anything, is that we need to speed up the pace of autonomy. And we also learned that, you know, supply chains are probably gonna become more regional going forward. I mean, we saw the debacle with PPE coming from across the world and how long it, take to, it took to get here in some cases. Um, so mobility is gonna, the technology that underpins mobility is gonna be what allows us to build those regional supply chains. So in the future, when we do put stress on that supply chain, um, it doesn't impact lives like it did this time around. So, so let's talk about your role in this, because I know uh, uh, for the most part, you're going to be uh, reporting directly to the governor. Dotted line to the governor. Yeah. The, the cool part about this office is that it's powered by multiple state departments. Um, so the MEDC, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, the economic development arm of the state, as well as the new Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity, which focuses on workforce and, and policy and also does a ton of great work in economic development. Um, those, they're, they're gonna have sort of ownership stakes in the office as well as MDOT uh, for obvious reasons and um, the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, which will be focused on grid impact and charging, right? Because this isn't just about sort of the future of mobility, it's also about you know, accelerating the adoption of electric vehicles. Um, so it, it really is gonna be a team effort um, and I know it may sound confusing without the, a graph, but the truth is we have a lot of great people across departments that are ready to support this thing, and I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm not sure a graph would straighten it out, by the way, but, <laughs> but it, it is very complex, but so is that mobility industry. Yeah, so I mean, in the meantime, during your tran uh, transition, tell me about the status of Planet M. Yeah, so Planet M is going to shift under this new office. And it's still going to be around and we're going to double down on some of those really cool programs that that made an impact from our technology activation grants that, you know, did things like help the elderly in the central UP um, get to grocery stores and doctor's appointments using idle uh, government fleet vehicles or, you know, the 
you know, installing artificial intelligence at the most dangerous intersection in Detroit to make it just a little safer, um, to matching up really cool startups with um, OEMs and tier ones to give those Michigan car companies, you know, a competitive advantage. We're still going to be doing all of those things. Um, and we're just now going to have the, the power of the office behind us. And frankly, I mean, we're still going to be working with great partners like Michelle Otto and Glenn Stevens and um, even folks across the state in Grand Rapids and Ann Arbor. So it's, it's a good time to be in the space. It's an important time to be in the space. Well, and it's going to be a great space, as you say, to be in, but it's great to have you in that space as well. Um, very quickly, anything else the business community should know about uh, what we're watching for from mobility? Um, yeah, so what we're seeing is a shift away from, from robo-taxis, from passenger autonomy. Um, we're seeing that in Silicon Valley. We're seeing that in Europe. Where it's going, um, money's still being spent, but it's going towards the movement of goods, um, autonomous trucking, mm. um, and, and frankly, the movement towards smart infrastructure. So leveraging um, what we're able to do with roads to allow um, cars that are equipped a split second more decision time um, if they have to, for whatever reason, swerve or break. What are those incremental changes that we can make to our infrastructure that, that make everyone safer? Because at the end of the day, I mean, we wanna, and it's about making people safer. Um, over the last decade, there were over 10,000 car accidents in Michigan that, that took lives. Um, i sorry, 10,000 fatal car crashes, so 10,000 yeah. lives. And our job, paramount here, is, is to reduce that number year over year over the next decade. Well, I think it's incredible that right when you were talking about auto accidents, you cued in the siren in the background. You are, I, <laughs> you are I, so clever, Trevor. I, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> That's funny. Sorry hey, again, being outside. Hey, good, good luck on this new position. You're the right man in the right spot, and we appreciate you spending some time with us, and we'll, we'll check in with you certainly periodically. Let us know if there's anything we can help with. All right, awesome. Thanks again, Chris. All right, take care. Trevor Paul, he is the uh, new Chief Mobility Officer for the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification for the State of Michigan. You're listening to the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. We'll be right back with more.